Hey guys, what's up? How are you? Um, yeah, I know. It's been quite a while, I'm sorry. I've been quite busy in the past. But yeah, I'm really glad that I finally managed to redo an old video of mine. In this video I want to talk about the frequently asked questions I've received and also go a little bit more in detail on um, how to scale a single target properly in terms of cost investment. Uh, yeah, let's start off with the uh, questions. Uh, why there's no leveling tree? Um, yeah, I want you guys to actually uh, learn the passive tree and how the passive nodes affect your character. And the next thing would be that the uh, wonders are really gear and level dependent so you pretty much have to optimize the passive tree uh, each time you level up for example let's say you're level 98 and you've hit 99 and you want that jewel socket that's left um, you then yeah take this 10 dex node for example but this is not giving you any benefit until you hit level 100 so instead you should take a life or damage node and then respect that one node and take the jewel socket with the next level up. Another thing that came across quite often is uh, wrong pathing in the passive tree. So we all come down from the shadow section up to the witch area and many like to fill those clusters first before going up to the wonder cluster up here. And that's pretty bad because um, this is a attack based critical strike character. So in order to deal sufficient damage to the enemies you have to hit the enemies first in order to be able to crit the enemies in order to benefit from the critical strike multiplier. So as you can see Throat Seeker is only giving you critical strike multiplier. Crackling Speed is giving you next to lightning damage also critical strike multiplier. Um, however, this cluster right here is giving you increased accuracy rating, which is increasing your chance to hit, and critical strike chance up here. So yeah, you need to fill those, this cluster first, and actually those two clusters, or this cluster and those two nodes, are filled at the very, very end of your leveling progress. The next two questions I'm receiving quite often is why no radar and why not dead eye? Well, Raider is... Well, let's, let's turn it the other way around. Um, Pathfinder can achieve one additional barrage projectile, which is a really huge boost. Um, also, it's boosting the evasion through, through a flask effectiveness, and you pretty much have a better flask uptime. So this makes Pathfinder better in terms of um, defense and offense and uptime. So why not that I? Well, that I received a really nice overhaul with 3.2, and next to the additional projectile and all the other flat damage boosts, you now can have Gathering Winds Tailwind, which makes you 10% faster, or up to 20%, I think, if you're using uh, skills recently, which refers to uh, the past four seconds. Which is really, really great, especially for leveling. I definitely recommend you guys to level Wonder or Bow character as a dead eye and later respect to Pathfinder once you get to Flasks. The reason why I still prefer Pathfinder is um, Elemental Status Immunity and Flask Uptime, which is really important in the late game, especially against boss fights. Um, also, you pretty much have to attack constantly to get the full buff of Tailwind, which kind of is um, counter-productive in that sense, since you have to stop to attack. The next question revolves around a flask effect. Um, many didn't really understood um, why I'm using a Conqueror's Potency Jewel. And once you know it, it's pretty simple. So to start off, we get around 20% increased flask effect from the travel nodes traveling nodes of the Pathfinder Ascendancy cluster and we get 8, 8, 16, 26% from the Alchemist wheel. That's 50, no that's 46% and with the Congress Potency we get above 50% and what's 50% of two projectiles? One projectile. 
And as you can see, we have six projectiles and with Dying Sun I'm getting nine projectiles. Another thing I'd like to add to the guide are the Tom Fist gloves. Um, those are really nice in terms of uh, DPS since if you're um, using a murderous eye jewel you will receive Intimidate which is a 10% more damage multiplier. However, you will have to sacrifice gems. Um, personally, I'm, I've put Kinetic Blast in the free link of my shield and put the two wall graces in the glove section. This way I'm losing a juicy crit chance of the Kinetic Blast but the Intimidate bonus is something you might want to test out. Um, it's really great for bossing. Yeah, speaking of uh, Abyss Uniques, there's also the chess piece uh, Shroud of the Lightless and a non-Abyss Unique which is called Euros Fostering. Those two are obvious um, DPS boost items, which you can use of course, but personally I dislike, for this build um, at least, since both don't really give you um, resists, so you have to get those elsewhere. So it's pretty much an exchange of having DPS on rings, amulet and so on, or on the chest piece. And also, um, Queen of the Forest is only giving you 100% movement speed in addition to your flasks compared to those pieces. Another really hot topic is um, how to sustain mana. So if you take a really really close look in this corner right here, you will see this mana leech node, which is enough for the end game. The next question would be, um, is there a magic find version? A magic find is, is no witchcraft. I mean, you basically stack an item quantity through viscous color, amulet, or venter, scambler rings, sadi mustache, and so on. The important thing is that you need good items uh, to counterweight those items since you will lose DPS and you will lose life. So that's really important, that's something you have to balance out for yourself. So, uh, last question, that's a bit of a weird one. Um, why not Headhunt? Why no Headhunter? Why no Inspired Learnings? Um, you obviously can use those items to increase the fun and the clear speed of your character. I personally dislike them because they're giving me inconsistent DPS output and also it makes no sense to showcase uh, a build with a headhunter since headhunter makes any build viable it turns any build into a dps monster uh, you just yeah need to kill enough rares to get those numbers mm, that's something that's like hiding the true core of a build i'd say oh i nearly forgot uh, many are having problems with uh, blood rage and there's a simple trick so as you can see um, I got the degen from Blood Rage and I have no monsters to leech life from. So what you can do is remove the gem or weapon swap and this will also stop the degen from Blood Rage. So yeah, I think I've covered most of the common questions. If you still have some, um, feel free to write it down in the comments or in the forum section. Um, so yeah. Let's move on with um, how to scale a single target properly. For this, let me switch up half of building. And before we start, it's uh, really important for you guys to not take my DPS as a benchmark, since this is my standard wonder, which is heavily overgeared. Uh, rather take a focus on how much the DPS increases for each DPS upgrade I'm adding. So um, I removed all the enchants the flasks, uh, congress potency and the sixth link and some other small goodies. Um, yeah, so we are currently sitting at a five link and if I add the sixth link the DPS increases by 31.5%. Boom. So that's like the first step, okay? The next thing... Oh, uh, also I want to mention that I'm gonna showcase also some tips to min-max the DPS 
for, let's say, your first shaper attempt with like bad gear ish to get the most out of your wonder to make sure that, I don't know, for example, your first shaper fight is gonna be successful. Okay? That's why you see a wise oak here, which I'm not using on my wander. And the important thing about wise oak is is this. So now if I tick it on, the DPS increases by 1.1%. So why is that? It's pretty simple. My cold res is the highest one <laughs> with the setting. So if you're using a wise oak, it's really important that you need the lightning resistance as the highest one since the DPS uh, we are dealing is 90% or higher lightning damage. Alright, so let's tick that one off. Um, Dying Sun is the biggest bang for buck in the flask section, next to a diamond flask of course. So this flask is going to give you 50% more damage. Boom. That's quite a jump, isn't it? So now let's say you manage to get uh, Ubalap and with Ubalap uh, Ascendancy and uh, Alchemist Cluster, which is up here, we are currently sitting at 46% flask effectiveness, right? So now if we are adding a Conqueror's Potency we are getting, this is sadly not really nice to see here, but um, we're getting another projectile which is giving us another quite juicy jump in terms of DPS. Um, yeah, the next step would be adding the Vessel of Vingtar, which is going to give me, well, 74, 17.4% more damage. And last but not least, uh, the Wise Oak another 18.8% more damage. So now let's add the boot enchant. So here's the thing. This boot enchant is the best for shaper, uh, shaper and elder guardians, but not for elder because elder is spawning um, adds all the time. So for Elder you might want to seek out for the attack speed if you killed recently in Chant. But yeah, let's add this one since we are in the simulation going to punch Shaper in the poo, -poo. Uh, Another, what, how much, how much was that now? 10%. 10% and those boots are pretty cheap and fairly easy to get compared to other things maybe. And the next thing would be uh, getting a helmet with the brush enchant, which is giving us 14.8% more damage. But that's not all in terms of uh, gear. Um, let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. So let's go to Act 9 real quick. I'm using in the second weapon slot, or in the offhand, a Storm prison, prison, which is giving us one additional power charge, and Brynnerod Flag, which is giving us two power charges for each war cry. So, let's see. Um, here's a tooltip. 50, no. The tooltip with my uh, actual wand. That's 105,000. So let's, let me cast war cry and two power charges. Now I'm sitting at 120. Let me get another two power charges. I'm sitting at 133. And the Rallying Cry buff effect is also inc um, increasing with more enemies around. Oh, I'm also got having now Onslaught up. But yeah, you get the idea. You get the idea. Let's go home real quick. So what this means is so if I go to the skill section and enable Relling Cry, this is giving us 2%. But that's not the main thing. The most important thing is that we are getting power charges against the boss. You can use Orb of Storms with power charge on crit, but most bosses tend to move quite a bit. So it's really hard to track those. 
Uh, another thing, let me switch back again. Let's go to the back to the desert. I'm also having a projectile weakness linked with curse on hit and over of storms. So let's, let's see. Okay, do we have one here? And okay, um, okay, we need to find someone that is actually not dying quickly. See, they are now cursed with projectile weakness while I'm using my uh, main weapon again. So that's the, the great thing about Orb of Storms. It's not disappearing when I'm switching weapons, as you can see. So, let's go back. So we are actually cursing the enemy, or the boss, with projectile weakness. And we will maybe receive a curse buff against bosses with 3.3 as they mentioned some rework going on there. And what is this go doing? 10%! 10% for like 2 mouse clicks. Alright, so what else? Alright, yeah. If you still want more damage, you can replace the... Where is it? The Herald of Ice? with Herald of Thunder, which is increasing the damage again. And that's about it in terms of um, single target scaling, I think. I hope this is, or this was, really helpful for you guys. Um, oh yeah, I nearly forgot the most important thing. Um, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a bit ashamed of it. Um, the MTX. Dun, dun, dun. So, I'm using the Eagle Claw with the Sin Weapon effect. Gloom Gloves, Sin Character effect. I didn't got uh, the Gloom Boots, but Outlaw Boots are fine for me. Sin Footprints, Badge of Skulls, Gloom Body Armor. Spiderweb Clock, which is a Halloween special, Fire Horns, Webbed Witch Hat, which is also a Halloween special, and a Black Cat and a Sin Cherub Pet. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you... Well, I hope I could help you guys out with one or another problem. And yeah, have a great day!